What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be giving a review of the 3D printing function of the Snapmaker Original 3-in-1 machine. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also want to give a huge shout out to Snapmaker for sending me this machine to review. I couldn't make this video otherwise, so huge thank you to the people over at Snapmaker. If you've never heard of Snapmaker before, they're a company that got its start on Kickstarter with their original 3-in-1 3D printing, CNC routing, and laser engraving machine. The Snapmaker original became the third most funded technology project on Kickstarter at the time after it raised $2.2 million in just 45 days. Since then, that record has been surpassed by several new projects, and one of those projects is the Snapmaker 2.0 3-in-1 3D printer, which is currently sitting at the top of the leaderboard with a total of $7.8 million raised in just 30 days. With numbers like that, it's hard not to have high expectations for this machine and its successor, so I'm incredibly excited to give this one a thorough review. In this video, I'll be covering just the 3D printing portion of this machine, so make sure to check back in a while for the CNC routing and laser engraving reviews. I should mention that the machine Snapmaker sent me is actually an open box, so the packaging might look a little bit different than it would on a new machine. And there are a few things missing from the box, but I've managed to either do without or replace the missing items with ones I had laying around my shop. The machine consists of a base plate, three extruded aluminum axes with the motors and end stops built in, a 3D printing platform, a CNC engraving and routing platform, and the three interchangeable tool heads. Now, the first pro on the list for this printer is the incredibly easy assembly. While I can't say that I've had many difficult to assemble 3D printers, considering the only other printer I have is the Anycubic i3 Mega, which can be assembled in under five minutes, I can say that this printer is a breeze to put together. It only took me about 15 minutes to attach all the axes, mount the control board, install the tool head, and wire everything up. In fact, I had leveled the bed and was printing my first part in under half an hour. Even if you take away my prior experience with 3D printers, I still think this would be an incredibly beginner-friendly machine. On top of the easy assembly, the touch interface is so simple that a beginner should have no problem figuring out all the controls for this machine. Snapmaker took a minimalistic approach to the user interface that eliminates the need for an in-depth understanding of 3D printer functionality. The menu gives you the option of inserting or removing filament, moving the print head around in jog mode, leveling the print bed, and that's about it. Speaking of leveling the print bed, it only took me about one minute to get this thing fully leveled out, thanks to the simple user interface and the small print bed. I did initially have some trouble getting my prints to stick to the bed, but I was able to track that issue down to two causes. The first problem that I found was that the bed sticker had been damaged by the previous owner, and I was easily able to fix that with a spare bed sticker I had from a box of overture filament. Second, the nozzle didn't seem to be getting close enough to the bed when the print started, causing the filament to curl up around the nozzle rather than sticking to the bed. Normally when I level a print bed, I use a regular piece of A4 printer paper and I adjust the nozzle height until it's just barely scratching on the paper. I found, however, that with the Snapmaker, I needed to adjust the nozzle so that I was able to pull the paper out from under it, but not push it back in. On many printers, if you get the nozzle that close to the bed during leveling, the print quality actually goes down since the filament isn't able to flow properly out of the nozzle. But for the Snapmaker, this seemed to do the trick, and from then on out, the bed adhesion was actually amazing. So after I got the bed adhesion down, I decided to do some benchmark tests to see how well this thing can actually print, and I was honestly blown away. All of the tests were sliced with Lubin, which is the software provided by Snapmaker for controlling this machine, and they were all sliced using the default PLA settings at normal quality. Even with the default settings, I hardly saw any stringing, 
The bed adhesion was amazing. It did a great job of printing the overhang test all the way up to 75 degrees, and it had no problem bridging gaps as wide as 25 millimeters. The dimensional accuracy was pretty spot on too, especially considering I haven't calibrated the stepper motors yet. So out of the box, I'm super happy with how well this thing is printing without any fine tuning of either the hardware or the slicing settings. So even though I was pretty happy with the benchmark tests I'd printed so far, no 3D printer review is complete until you've printed the crowd favorite Benchy. Unsurprisingly, the results turned out just as great for Benchy as it did for the other test prints. So with that obligatory print out of the way, the last thing to do was test this printer with some other filaments. I repeated the same test prints with ABS and PETG and the results were just as great. With all the printing tests out of the way, the next pro that I'd like to cover is the ease of which you can switch over to the other functions of this machine. In short, swapping machine functions is a breeze. With only a single RJ45 connector and four socket cap screws holding the tool head on, and four thumb screws holding the build plate on, in a matter of minutes you can go from engraving something with the laser to 3D printing another Benchy. Since the tool head is easily detached, nozzle maintenance is also incredibly easy as you don't have to work around the rest of the machine to get at the nozzle. The previous owner had actually left a clogged nozzle when they returned it to Snapmaker, so I had to swap it out, but honestly it was one of the easiest nozzle swaps I've ever done. Another great pro for this machine is the low cost of replacement parts. Since it's made from easy to obtain materials such as aluminum extrusion for the axes, replacement parts and upgrades are actually super affordable. For example, there's a Z-axis extension module you can buy for only $99, and the replacement print platform is only $29. Snapmaker also sells an enclosure for this machine, and I'm hoping to get a chance to try that out in the future. Another pro for this printer, and really the machine in general, is the open source software that comes with it. Lubin is the three-in-one software provided by Snapmaker for preparing the G-code, CNC routing, and laser engraving files for this machine and it is actually surprisingly capable. Even if you have no prior experience with either of the three functions of this machine, Lubin makes it incredibly easy to import your models and prepare them for the machine. With Lubin, you can either export your prepared files to a USB drive, or you can connect directly to your machine with a provided USB cable, which allows you to send commands directly to your machine. Lubin also has an integrated command line so you can view the responses from your machine. I usually use Ultramaker Cura to slice my files, and Cura also allows you to send commands to your printer, but you can't view the response. The last pro that I want to mention is something that I actually thought was going to be a downside of this printer, which is the build volume. This printer has a 125 millimeter cubed build volume, which is just under five cubic inches. Coming from the i3 Mega, which has a little bit more than eight cubic inches, I was worried that I would only be able to print tiny knickknacks and other useless stuff like this. However, when I actually got this machine, I was pleasantly surprised by the size because it fits nicely and easily on my desk. It also means that if I were to get the enclosure, it wouldn't take up nearly as much space as my current enclosure, which would quickly make my workshop feel way too cramped. So if you're limited in space, but you want to get into 3D printing, CNC routing, and laser engraving, the Snapmaker is definitely the best option for you. But if you're just looking for a 3D printer, then the small build volume would definitely be a downside, especially since there are much cheaper yet bigger 3D printers available. In fact, for $50 less, you could get a Prusa i3 kit, which is arguably the best 3D printer in that price range. However, that's not necessarily a fair comparison since the Snapmaker is the only machine you would need for a fully functioning rapid prototyping shop. Now, despite my previous comments on the software, I didn't love how tightly tied this machine is to Lubin. Even though Lubin is an incredibly capable bit of software and it's great for beginners, it definitely has limitations when it comes to slicing options. For example, when trying to print some thin features on one of my models, I couldn't actually get Lubin to slice anything that small. I tried slicing with Cura instead, but it, it didn't go very well. For some reason, it would try to print a few millimeters above the bed no matter how many times I calibrated the machine. To fix this, I ended up having to install a Z-height plugin for Cura just so that I could get the print to stick to the bed. And in the end, I think Lubin is trying to accomplish too much by being a three-in-one software that it sacrifices slicing quality and functionality when compared to dedicated slicers like Cura. Another downside I found with this machine is that the x-axis would slide down as I was trying to swap out the tool head. 
Since you're supposed to power the machine off to replace the tool head, the motors didn't have enough passive resistance to hold up the weight of the gantry assembly, which made it kind of difficult to swap things out. This wasn't a huge deal as long as I made sure not to put too much down pressure as I was working on it. The last con that I could find with this machine as far as 3D printing goes is the lack of functionality from the touchscreen. Like I mentioned before, Snapmaker took a very simplistic approach to the user interface, which I think is great in so many ways. On the other hand, I have a fair bit of experience working with 3D printers already, so I felt like I was limited by the touch interface. One quick example of functionality that I thought was missing is the inability to set the temperature of the nozzle or the heated bed. You can heat the nozzle up to swap out the filament, but other than that, there isn't a way to set the temperature from the touch screen. I normally like to level the build plate while the nozzle and the heated bed are at printing temperature, but this isn't a huge deal because you only need to do that for glass beds, since glass beds can kind of change shape as they heat up. Furthermore, if you connect your printer to Lubin, you'll be able to control the printer to do anything you need, so the limited touch UI is just a minor inconvenience. All in all, this is an incredibly impressive machine. Honestly, I was expecting to see some reduction in print quality given the fact that this is a 3-in-1 machine, but I was blown away. In the future, I hope that Snapmaker reduces the dependency on Lubin for this machine, especially for the 3D printing functionality, because there are more advanced slicers like Cura or Prusa Slicer that many people would like to use with this machine. With that in mind, I don't want to knock Lubin too much because I was very impressed with its simplicity when it came to the routing and engraving workflow, but I'll cover that in more detail in the upcoming videos for this machine. In the end, I'm definitely impressed with the 3D printing capabilities of the Snapmaker original 3-in-1 machine, and I think Snapmaker would be a worthy addition to any workshop. Like I mentioned, in the future I'll be covering the other abilities of this machine in more detail, but I wanted to break it up so I could give each functionality a thorough review. If you liked this video, check out my Patreon page and consider supporting my channel so I can keep making awesome videos like this. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos, and let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Otherwise, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.